Abnormal behaviour is likely to indicate the presence of a psychological disorder. Psychologists have attempted to define abnormality. One definition states that abnormal behaviour is behaviour that deviates from social norms. Social norms are the unwritten rules of society. So this definition says that behaviour that is not consistent with the expectations of others is disordered. The definition says that when society's agreed conventions are not upheld, there is likely to be a psychological disorder. There are limitations of this way of defining abnormal behaviour. One problem is that a behaviour that goes against the accepted standards of society might be normal depending on where the behaviour occurs. As well as the context, it might be necessary to consider the degree to which the behaviour is displayed, as a one-off behaviour that doesn't impact on anyone else might not be viewed as disordered. Some deviating behaviours might also be considered simply eccentric or quirky rather than indicators of mental health problems. The definition might also be open to abuse and misuse as it could be used to control and label people as abnormal if their deviating behaviour is seen as threatening to the current views of society or a group in power. As social norms can change, it's impossible to use this definition to consistently define abnormality over time. The culture in which a behaviour occurs also needs to be taken into account. Standards of acceptable behaviour are different in different cultures and this makes it difficult to use the definition to decide if there's a psychological disorder because what appears abnormal and disordered in one culture might appear perfectly normal and psychologically healthy in another. Another definition states that abnormal behaviour is behaviour that disrupts or prevents day-to-day -day activities from being carried out. A change in daily life and the individual's usual routines might indicate the presence of a psychological disorder. This definition focuses on the individual's ability to cope with everyday life. One problem with this definition is that a person's functioning in their day-to-day -day life isn't just affected by their mental health. For example, discrimination or a financial recession might limit opportunities to keep an existing job or get a new job if made redundant. Unemployment would indicate a failure to function, but does not always indicate the person has a psychological disorder. Another problem is that what is deemed to be coping with daily life might differ in different cultural groups. Psychological disorders do not always impact a person's day-to-day -day life, and they can appear to be coping even with a psychological disorder. For example, some disorders might not impact day-to-day -day activities such as going to work until they become more severe, and some individuals might be able to hide their disorder so it doesn't impact on their life at all. Judgments about what's adequate functioning might also depend on whether you are judging your own behaviour or someone else's. A third definition takes a different approach to defining abnormality. Deviation from ideal mental health defines what is normal or ideal and suggests that anything that does not comply with this is by default abnormal. Yehoda, an Austrian psychologist, proposed that there are six criteria required for an ideal state of mental health. The absence of any of these criteria is seen as indicating a psychological disorder. This definition is also limited. The concept of ideal mental health is culturally relative. In other words, it depends on the ideals and values of your culture as to what qualities are likely to be desirable. Yehoda's six criteria may define normality in a Western individualistic culture where the pursuit of personal goals and being independent are valued, but this might be seen as undesirable and mentally unhealthy in a collectivist culture where group goals are the priority. Finally, this definition paints a somewhat unrealistic and unattainable picture of good mental health. If the definition was applied rigidly, many people would be regarded as having a psychological disorder all or at least some of the time.